Hey BMW, make it sexy. Okay, I will increase the temperature. It will be more comfortable shortly. Let me know if it gets too warm for you. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what that means. Basically, she's getting it warm enough you can take your clothes off, Damo. <laughs> Cheers, love. <laughs> Good morning guys and welcome back to Demo Drives, bringing real reviews to real people and answering some of those questions other channels might not talk about. When it comes to great driver's cars, one manufacturer stands out for me and that is BMW. Well their tagline is, the ultimate driving machine. And that is true, I've driven some great cars from this company. The motor series is changing hugely. In 2030, you're only gonna be able to buy electric cars. And to me, there's a bit of a thorn in the side of BMW. That thorn has got a name. It's called Tesla. They have got some serious competition. To me, when I think electric car and cool car, Tesla springs right to the top of my list. So what have BMW got to do to be competitive in this market? Well, I've come down to Chandler's here in Howsham to have a look around the brand new iX and take it out on the road. This is a very, very important car for them. Sits in the SAV segment and it's up against Tesla Model X. So this car has got an awful lot to live up to. We're gonna take it out on the road. It's got huge amounts of tech. We're gonna have a look around the outside, the styling, what it's like to drive. So I'm gonna jump in, it's absolutely freezing. We're gonna head on down to a friend of mine at HPC Classics. They love obviously their classic cars get their opinion on the styling and the tech, and then we'll go for a drive around the countryside. So guys, get ready for probably the most advanced BMW ever made in 2022. Let's start off with the front. We've got to get this out of the way. People, a lot of people are disliking this new grille. People have said it looks like a beaver or a rabid rat or something, but I actually think it looks pretty good. My wife who hates cars, I asked her, what do you think that looks like? Instead, it looks like an angry shouty person. So I'm gonna go with that because I do think it looks okay. We might as well focus on this while we're talking about it. We don't need any air intakes to cool the engine down. So this is the, I think it's called a technology panel. It's made of self-healing material. So if you get scratches, it heats up and it will flatten it back out. So it's very clever. But the really clever bits are what's under here. We've got a camera, the radar, the LiDAR and other bits of tech all hidden behind here that will help with all of the driver aids and tech functions we've got in here because we've got a lot of them and it's very cool. If you're a techie like me, you're gonna love this car because it's awesome. We've got thinnest ever lights on a BMW, their new laser lights, and look how thin they are. They're really, really thin, and they really modernize the look of it. The overall look, they've wanted a monolith design, so that means flat surfaces, because it's more aero. And even with that, I do think it looks okay. I'm sure some of you are screaming and bashing away at the keyboard now saying, oh my God, what are you thinking? But please put in the comments down below what you think of the look of the car. So that's the front. Let's have a look around the side and then we'll uh, go to the back and the boot and then we'll go for a drive. The side profile of the iX is a bit like an X5, but with a lot less creases and curves. It's a lot smoother lines on here. We've got huge 22 inch alloys now if we actually look at these interestingly part of the spokes on here are actually made of aluminium and the other parts these here which aid with aerodynamics are actually they're plastic <laughs> i didn't realize that until um matt at bmw was telling me about it so yeah more aerodynamic wheels and i think it gives you like an extra 10 kilometers of range so every little bit helps with this um yeah like i said there's very few there's no strong swage lines. There's this gentle crease here. We've got a slight crease. I don't know if it's going to come across on camera. Slight crease here. There's not a lot going on. Door handles as well. There aren't any. They're recessed in. It makes it more aerodynamic. 
If we go at the back here, this is interesting. We've got, this is where the Hoffmeister kink, you've sort of got that styling still, which is synonymous with BMW, but you've got this black section here with IX, which sort of separates that pillar and sort of gives it a floating look. I'm, I'm in two minds. I'm not sure whether I like that. I don't know what you guys think. Here we've got the huge panel. <laughs> this is for the charging ports. So it's uh, AC and rapid DC on the 40 model up to 150 kilowatts. So it will charge in about 38 minutes. And if you go for the 50, that's got bigger battery, but it still takes the same amount of time to charge because that will charge up to 200 kilowatts. So overall, the side is, it's okay. It's not really groundbreaking. It's, I don't quite know how to put it really. It looks better in person than it does coming across on camera. But that's the, the side of it. Let's head around the back and we'll have a look in the boot. Again, the back is very modern as well. We've got the very, very thin towel lights and they're actually recessed in to the actual boot itself. I think they look really cool. The back of it, it's not to everyone's taste, I know. Well, the styling of the whole car isn't really to everyone's taste. Down here, we have this diffuser where you'd normally have exhaust pipes. They've sort of added some detailing there. I think it does break it up. If there weren't any of these sort of creasing curves, it would look like a big slab on the back of the car. So I don't mind that at all. The reversing camera coolly is built into the BMW badge. We've got kick to open, so you swipe your foot underneath the car and the boot will automatically lift up. So in here, I've got loads and loads of camera equipment. This is actually a 500 litre boot, which is okay. It's significantly smaller than the X5, which has got 650 litres. Really, it's more comparable with the X3. So there's a reasonable amount of room. The reason they've done that is the inside passenger room is bigger than the X5, but they've made the sacrifice by having a smaller boot. And completely flat floor, and underneath there as well, you can lift up and there's an area to put all your cables. It's been designed so you can hide all of your charging gubbins away underneath. So the back of it is pretty practical. Now, one thing that, the reason the boot aperture is smaller than the back of it is the tail lights are obviously up there. And if you're parked up at night, and you're opening the boot, someone wouldn't see the back of you. So they've had to add these extra lights into the back here. So that is where you think you've got a really wide boot. It's not as wide. It's a shame um, that they couldn't work something else out because you've got an extra set of lights. So yeah, not sure about that, but never mind. I'm not gonna worry too much. So what we'll do, let's hop in the back quickly, then in the front, then we'll go for a drive. Wow, that's the first thing when you get in the back. There's so much legroom in here. Because there is no transmission tunnel, you've got a completely flat floor and you can fit three adults in the back here. It will even take three child seats and we have got Isofix for two of them. There is just so much legroom. And if you are in the center seat here, this central armrest section here is actually floating so your feet can fit underneath there. And if we look at this central section here, we've got dual zone climate control. Now, if you went for the 50, you get heated rear seats as well. But even so, it's just a very nice place to be. I took Miles out earlier on, who's a bit of a BMW fanatic, to see what he thinks of the car. And six foot, I'm six foot, so we've left the seats where we were. And I've got so much leg room in the back here. I've got at least four or five inches between my knees and the back of the seat. Sunroof, which normally encroaches on headroom, I've probably got a foot above my head as well. It is, it's just lovely in here. We've got a central armrest. Cup holders are built into the end. So you can put your drinks there and still rest on there. So that's great, but it's just a lovely place to be in the back of here. It's so well put together. It's typical BMW build quality. And it probably is better than the Model X in terms of that. So next thing is jump in the front. I'm gonna show you around some of the tech and we'll go for a drive. I love the car in terms of tech. I can really geek out in terms of that. And I'm gonna tell you about some of the pretty mad bits of technology this car has. So let's hop in the front and then we'll go for a drive. Wow. 
Well, this is pretty special in here. Let's have a look around the car briefly and we'll go for a drive. Now in here, it is very minimalistic compared to other BMWs that have come before it. We've got brand new iDrive version 8 and this huge wraparound screen. We've got a driver's display on the right and then over on the left, it's more of your uh, functions like air conditioning and well, there's millions of things that we'll go over once we've set off. Slightly different shaped steering wheel, got a hexagonal one so you can see the dials behind it. This centre console as well, this is it's like a floating console, gives it a really modern feel. Got controls for the iDrive, it's your gear selector in the middle here, start stop button. An absolute cavernous central armrest, which has also got some very cool features I'm going to tell you about once we're out driving. Cup holders down here, wireless charging for my phone. It's just very pleasant in here. I thought the back was nice, but this is so modern, so futuristic. I absolutely love it. It's classy and I can really geek out and hopefully you guys will be as excited about the inside and some of this tech. So let's get going then. I think we want to go out for a drive and I can, well, share the experience of the new iX. <laughs> I've come down to uh, pick up Miles. Yeah. On another video, in a bit of a fanatic of BMWs. Yeah, aren't you? mad BMW nut. There's pretty much none of the classics that I haven't owned, barring an E9, really. Um, <laughs> so I do love them, um, and this is a totally new experience. I, um, for a change, I haven't got any facts or wisdom for Damo. I know absolutely nothing apart from the roundel on the middle of the steering wheel. So, yeah, this is fresh for me. <laughs> yeah, it's the newest and latest and greatest, most advanced bit of tech that has come out of BMW. Um, this is what Munich are up to these days. Yeah, lots of carbon fibre chassis, bits of aluminium, bits of steel, trying to keep it lightweight, although it's a bit of a behemoth and they've yeah. been just under 2.5 tonnes. That's pretty weighty. Which is a lot of <laughs> weight, but at least it's like 320 brake, I would say. So that's, yeah, it's I mean, pokey. technically it should really not go anywhere um, if it weren't for the torque. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So you just put your foot down, it's like whoosh. This hexagonal steering wheel, the reason for that shape is so you can see the... Um, see more dials. Yeah, you can actually see the panel. So they're actually copying ideas from TBR now with a twin spoke steering wheel so that you've got the gauges ah. underneath. They, they've gone that far, they're exploiting Blackpool's finest. <laughs> and the fact you've got a button to open the door as opposed to actually door handles. Well, again, yeah. TVR. We, we are, we're, we're, they're almost catching up with TVR in 1998. This is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> now, I am a big BMW fan, honestly. Um, and, I mean, it's very cool, don't get me wrong. And it's nice and warm in here, too. It's so cosy. Well, there's so much, you, you think about tech you know was it going to be some fans but they've rather than having the whole car heat up you've got mm. radiating heat down by Ambient your heat. knees you've got the armrest if that's turned on that that well, ever a so, bit of warmth slight there, yeah. bit of warmth there now so out the side so it, it's like a cocoon of well, warmness you turn it up full you know bacon and eggs in here whilst you're cruising along and it sorts itself out exactly you just sort of sit there level. and that's if you buy the top spec one, I suppose. <laughs> Got a really hot steering wheel now. Oh yeah, sorry, I tell you. I need to right turn up. that down. Um, <laughs> so climate menu. Uh, here Don't we want go. a burnt hand demo. <laughs> <laughs> so you can turn this down. You, if you've got it, if you put it in like auto, you can change these individually. So I've got my controls on the right, your controls on the left. So you've got a very hot seat there. Yeah. But if you put, nice. <laughs> you can just let the car deal with it. Otherwise, you can say turn the temperature up and it will turn the steering wheel, just everything sorts its stuff out. It's very clever. And you yeah. don't do anything. The idea is you don't take your eyes off the road whilst you tell it and command it to change. Exactly. It's pretty smart. Um, it's got a nice turn of 60, it's like 6.1, but it feels so much quicker than that. It's the amount of torque, I think. Yeah, and it's instant torque. It's not like you need to wait for anything. It's just like. Nothing has to build up, does it? No. Nah. And I know the Tesla Model X, which obviously this is up again, that's its main competitor, is faster a lot in a straight line. You've got the new plan, like, which this, is... This feels faster than the Tesla that I've been in. Oh, really? Um, just, just purely on feel. I don't know whether it is or not, but already it feels rapid. Um, it's so well built, though, in here. Everything oh, is like... Yeah, I mean, it, it. it's like the 
I had a G30 530E as my last company car, and that was obviously very quiet, refined, and well built. Um, and it is, it's a, they were a step up even from the, the F10 and F11s. This is like that, Next really nicely again, put it? together. Yeah, it's, it's, it's classy actually, it's not over the top. I'm not quite sold on the colour of these buttons, but I mean, that was a nice way to move though, car. because they've obviously always been down by your right hand side. You've had to mm. fiddle around under the seat and try and find them. Yeah. But it's gone very Mercedes with it. They've gone being, comfort. Yeah, yeah, this again, like this is very 1980s Mercedes, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Memory seats, and there's so much tech on here. They. They've called it, what's their design philosophy? shy -tech. I thought they said something else. We won't say what it sounds like. But um, I know that it was that not the exterior styling, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's said to divide opinion, but the guys in the workshop seem to be pretty unanimous. In yeah, there. they don't like it, do they? No, no, no. no. I do. No. I, I... It's different. It's, I have to say, I hate, well, no, everybody hated the bangle butt cars when they came out. I always loved them, hence I've, I've had to own um, the V10 M6. Um, I've had a few bangle butt cars. They're, they're brilliant, they'll grow on you. Like the new M4 with its funny mouth, I think that will, in 10 years time, everything else will look really dated, um, and that will still look current and fresh. I love this large curved screen. It's I'm really nice. Really, really nice. This looks confusing at first, it's like, oh my god, there's so many buttons, well not buttons, areas you can press on, but yeah, you halve that, don't on. you? Yeah. Because that's your side and that's my side. And you can sync it as well, which is what I used to do with the company car. Yeah. Because if it's only you in the car, control the lock Who cares, seat. but you've got all your buttons down here. This is the thing, it's all touchy screen stuff, which is a bit more annoying when you're driving along because you're trying to aim your finger, but when you can just tell it what you want it to do yeah, instead, or, then you don't need them anymore. Yeah, you can just so use your... Overrides the problem. Yeah, that's more like it. I drive... I drive, yeah, forward. back to the... And then all your widgets and a lot of widgets in here. And then this is quite cool. So we've got this drive recorder. I don't think it'll work. So this is using... Um, if you have an accident or it feels like sudden deceleration it's re constantly recording in the background and then it will save 30 second clips if something major if happens if something happens so then all of a sudden you've got your dash cams from front both sides rear that's pretty smart and it's like that's your fault and if the car gets broken into or the alarm goes off it will then start recording inside the car with the camera here and then all around you and then <laughs> sends it to your Hello, Munich. exactly sends it to your mobile phone the BMW app so you can see which criminals trying to steal your car um, which I think is a really it? clever use of all of it so I'm gonna put on the sat nav I'm gonna get you to do it because I don't so press nav you just press search for something anywhere doesn't matter just somewhere we want to go um, okay. there you go that's ridiculous now you got augmented reality with cameras on the front please turn right in 200 yards and then the if we keep watching that you'll see that should that's completely mental that makes me feel slightly weird <laughs> so i've got that one over there with the augmented reality the head-up display's got it as well and you've got one on there and that, you got that now turn right onto Devonshire Place. Look at that, that's actually nuts. And tells you where you can go down there. So, the next thing, we thought that was pretty bonkers, is the regenerative braking. So you've got different modes. You can either have it in like a really aggressive, you put it in B, and that will bring you to a stop. When you ease off the accelerator, so it turns the electric motors in the opposite direction, generates electricity, puts it back into the battery. So you can have like one pedal driving, which is cool. Yeah. But then if you put it in, so you've got like low, that will mean you can coast, medium, well it's obviously medium there. You've got adaptive, which is in at the moment. So now this is using the radar, LIDAR, all the parking stuff around me and the sat nav data to work out the amount of regen the car Rating needs. Required. So if I come up to traffic lights and they're on a red, it will be in a high regen, so it will stop you when you get to the lights. It will so actually stop you completely. It will stop you, just... yeah, completely come to a stop. Okay. If the lights go green while you're heading towards it, the regen will go to low. It'll back off, yeah. So it will coast because you don't need to stop. 
if you're indicating to go down junction or the sat nav knows you need to go a certain it'll, way, it'll go medium regen because you'll need to you back a little bit. Yeah, slow down. Um, so at the moment, like it's reading that car in front, and it knows that it's there, it's, it's got a slight bit of regen on it. I just felt I felt it loosen off then. Yeah. Yeah. Because it knows the car's going. It is so clever. And there's it's so simple to use. Like the that's all you've got for your like your cruise control and everything else like that. I've got to remember how to do it. There you go. So you've just got press that button, you just get some options down there and you can just go through speed limits of distance, so how far it's reading ahead of you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess yeah, if you've got somebody in front, it's yeah, telling you yeah. Yeah, it's how close you want to be. So now I've put it in it's in like pretty much autonomous. I don't need to you need your hands on the wheel, but it'll keep you in lane. Oh, do that as well. Yep. So it'll steer, slow down, speed up. You very much like Tesla does. No, it's beeping because my hand, both hands are off the wheel. Oh, um, really? Yeah. So I but think you get a short amount of time. It's telling you. Yeah, you're allowed yeah. to grab a beverage or. Exactly, but you're not allowed to tab it off and it'll start binging and bonging and telling you off yeah, yeah now that's that's the modern technology that would wind me up to the point of yeah you know, i'm just gonna get out and walk <laughs> um but i think most of that you probably turn off i know in the g30 you could although this is this is a different animal aimed at different different demographics isn't it really yeah this is designed predominantly for people that i would think don't want to drive um they're, but, they're using it as a tool yes as opposed to anything else and I suspect most people, I, I don't know what our percentage is, but I have a funny feeling that most people aren't interested in cars as a car. They're interested in a tool to go to from do a to job. Bed. Yes. Yeah. That's, I, mean, this I get on be... the train, I don't give a monkeys about trains. No. This would be a very good car to go from A to B. Yeah. Um, and, and it does everything very comfortably. Yeah. No idea how well this thing handles. I've got a feeling it might not be. Let's see if we can roll it, shall um, we? <laughs> <laughs> so we're in normal driving mode at the moment so you've got the button over here my mode so we can go if you look at the doors as well when i press sport so they get a red oh they turn red yeah so it must got, be lighter weight and the doors have got more horsepower now so <laughs> so everything's a bit more responsive so oh it makes a noise as well it didn't make a noise before no no it's the um it's hand if you've heard of hand zimmer He's the um, he does like films. He's a like, he designs music for films and everything. He's amazing and things like that. He's designed the soundtrack for this. Okay. So different modes. have got different. So it's just that's actually coming out the speakers. Yeah. Just yeah. letting you know that you're doing an accelerate. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so yeah, you know, you're on a hill. What's that? Twenty. Yes, that torque is 30, insane. 40. Oh, 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 I got a bit wobbly there. But it's a yeah, I have to say, I wouldn't take it, would be my first choice in the shed for a day around brands. Um, no, but it's smooth and it's quick, it's quite it's impressive for what it is. You know, trying to keep that much mass going in the correct direction is a, is a challenge in itself. Yeah. It does really, it does really pick up, but it doesn't feel quick once you're once you oh, get it's there. Not no. quite there. You know, that's 60 miles an hour. It's pretty quiet. I, I, I'm gauging this against an Alpina with double glazing, and that that was really quiet. Like you had to open the sunroof to even hear that anything was happening. Oh really? Yeah, um, that was wonderful. Because in probably how windy it is up here at the moment. It's pretty breezy. Yeah, it's <coughs> it's, it's well sealed and insulated. That's for sure. Yeah, so it feels a lot faster than it actually is. Yeah. You know, you look at the speed, and you're like, oh, actually, not going that quickly. It's just um, that shove, isn't it? It's the amount it's, of torque, yeah. Which is nice. I think it's only got a top speed of 120 or something. But, to be honest, you're which not is fine in the UK. You're not going to do much more than that, no. no. It's the German autobahns you may be a bit. But as Again, not, how I'm, long could you go at that speed before it runs out of batteries? Probably just not that long. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't. No, this is like 230 miles on the smaller battery. It's like 365 miles if you go for that. 50D, which is the next one up, which is a long, that's quite a long way. To yeah, for an electric car, that is a pretty long way. And then, if you've got the maximum charge on this, it's like 40, 41 minutes, 
10 to 80%. It's not bad, but can you do that anywhere? No. No. You need a maximum charge on this is 150 kilowatts. Um, if you go for the next one, it's 200. So interestingly, the, even though this has got a 71 kilowatt battery and the top one's got 103 kilowatt battery, they charge in the same amount of time because the fast charge on this is 150 and the fast charge on the 50 is 200. Okay. So they charge in the same same sort of time. That, that's all gone like this to me, to be honest. I'd I like to say I understand, but I'm sure there will be people out there that definitely do understand that. because they're. Looking What's the at, simplest way? If you can find somewhere to charge it quickly, it's going to take under 40 minutes. Yeah, it won't take you long, but there's, what, four charging stations in the UK that can do it or something? The, mm, the, or you have to take there's one not as many. from your house? You can do it from the house, so you've either got the three pin plug, which is a bad idea. How long do you think it takes to charge this, the three pin plug? Probably most of the evening. 31 hours. Right, so it's pointless then. That one is, yeah. Right. So, really you need like one of the pod home charging so units. So you need three, three phase power, basically. <laughs> so ideally you need an industrial unit at work that you can plug it into You'll and then it. drive it home and then drive it to work again in the morning. Or, like I said, the pod charging points that you can have fitted at home, they go up to like 11 kilowatt and that's like 10 hours, which is fine. I think 10 hours for a pretty much full charge. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm still old school on this. It takes me under five minutes to get a full tank of fuel. So that to me is excessive. If I wanted to go for a blast, I wanted a full tank of fuel. Yeah. I don't think I could wait 10 hours. Um, it's a lovely car, don't get me wrong, but if you took away the technology, it would actually be a lot better. Because it's really refined. It's great, it's smooth, it's comfortable, it's got loads of room. Um, the, the looks don't do it for me, I'll be honest. Um, they've tried somehow to put the Hoffmeister kink on it. I don't, don't think they should have bothered. Um, but, yeah. It's, I mean, it's a, no, it's a lovely, lovely place to be. It's very well made. It's, it's great in every way, apart from if you like cars. So what are my overall thoughts of this car? Well, I think it's brilliant. <laughs> I like it so much, it's so comfortable, it's quite, I love the tack on here, I can really geek out with how much stuff there is to play around in here, and it does everything that I could possibly want. It's not the most exciting or dynamic car to drive, because it's an electric car. It's nothing to do with this car, it is a very, very good electric car, and it's still got some of those driving dynamics of BMW, but you are going to lose things because it is so heavy. It's, it's a big old car. So if you're after something for pure driving pleasure, then I don't think it's the car for you. If you're after something comfortable, quiet, that will do everything really well, it certainly could be the car for you. Looks wise, again, subjective. Um, you'll be here from Miles, what he thought about the looks. He's a proper petrol head and it's a real, hmm, it divides opinion, this car. Some people absolutely hate it, some people like it, some people are indifferent. I'm on the, I quite like it. So overall, I think it's a great car. I don't know what you guys think, put in the comments down below. Anyway, that's the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Miles' opinions are certainly very different to mine. And, <laughs> Yeah, he's probably not the demographic for this car, but as he said. Anyway, guys, thanks to BMW Charles in Howsham for lending me the car. The weather, unfortunately, is turning very dark. It's winter and you hardly get any sunshine at all. I'm starting to waffle now, so anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Comments are always welcome. And remember to click on the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.